as we all know. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, Admiral. Um, thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, my name is Captain Cassandra Gasecki, and the rest of my fire team here is Major Caleb Eames, Captain Justin Smith, and Ms. Kalika Bechtel. Um, so as Dr. Sweetser mentioned, um, our uh, presentation and study uh, was presented at the International Public Relations Conference this year, and it won the biggest award. Um, not to brag, <laughs> um, but just to point out that the conference uh, theme this year was really important to us, and we took it to heart when we were developing this study. Um, it was looking back and looking forward 20 years of PR theory and practice. So looking forward, um, we really considered this theme important, especially with the new policy change that the DOD just put out, one of the most recent and, and predominant ones in the media now, um, and the inclusion of all genders in all combat jobs. Um, so basically this means that for the first time in history, I have the same opportunities as my male counterparts have had throughout history. Um, so in the wake of this new policy, we really wanted to take a look at the public relations theory of framing. Now this theory has been around for more than 40 years. Um, it originated in the early 1970s by Irving Goffman. That means anything to any of you, but even though, yeah, <laughs> um, even though the definitions have changed throughout the century, er, centuries, um, decades, we've been here a long time. <laughs> it feels like it. Um, even though the definitions have changed throughout the decades, scholars generally um, define it as a way of organizing information to add context and a little background to an issue or a topic. So we wanted to take a look at how framing affected perceptions of this topic, gender integration. So specifically, we developed three hypotheses. I won't repeat them all word for word, but they were that the public's perception would be affected um, by the framing of a news article on this topic, and it would affect the perception of the Marine Corps' reputation, credibility, and characteristics. Our one research question that we also developed was that um, we wanted to see how those three variables, relationship, credibility, and characteristics, correlated with each other, how they related. If one went up, what did that do to the other two? So in order to better understand our, um, our research question and the hypothesis, the background there, it's instructive to look back and see what scholars have done previously in the work of uh, framing, as Cassie began to describe. Now, scholars have long proposed that framing is essentially potential information in a story, new story, or narrative that is either selected in or selected out. Now, that could either be by reporters using facts. We've heard a lot of talk about alternative facts in that respect. Mm -hmm. Or it can be by the public relations officers or public uh, 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 relations experts in selecting individual words that carry connotations or meanings. And that can influence, as you know, the perceptions of the public. Now, uh, scholars also propose that, uh, that essentially framing is a way that society organizes socially shared constructs. And socially shared const constructs drive our public discussions. And public discussions drive political discussions. And political dis discussions drive policy making and decision making at the very highest levels. And hence you see the gravity of what we're looking at. So in order to test for the uh, effects of framing, our research team decided to use an experimental design in which we manipulated or changed the content of a credible news source. The news source we used was the Marine Corps Times. Now, the Marine Corps Times is an independently held private organization, not authorized by or funded by, yes, shockingly, not authorized <laughs> by or funded by, um, uh, supported by, by the Marine Corps or U.S. government at all, at all. The story we chose focused on a female officer's attempt at the Marine Corps' infantry officer's course. Now, this is a 10-week, grueling and challenging course that upon graduation, those that pass are put into specific Marine Corps combat leadership roles, infantry officers, something that's not been done before. Important to our focus on gender integration, there have been several females who have attempted this course. The, the course is open to females to attempt it, but none has successfully passed to date. However, there is a female going through the course right now as we speak, and we look forward to seeing how well she does. There's some other framing for you as well in those parts. <laughs> um, so, um, the, uh, the article uh, was a good one, and we chose it really for two reasons. One, because the Marine Corps Times is publicly perceived as a military source, hence a likely avenue of information for recruit age adults seeking information either to join the Marine Corps or maybe just information about the Marine Corps. And secondly, uh, because the article itself dealt with that specific female officer's attempt in the broader context of the societal discussions the last few years, uh, the article itself lent credibility and certainly external validity to our uh, study. 
So in this study, we employed a post-test only experimental design with a control. The independent variable of this study was the frame of the news media article. The dependent variable were the perceptions of the respected participants. So each of the 648 participants were randomly assigned to one of three cells. We'll call them positive, negative, and then the control. So the positive cell featured a news media article with a positive headline, which read, one out of 10 females successfully complete tough infantry officers course. As well, there was a quote from a Marine spokesperson in the article that emphasized females passing the training. So the negative cell featured a news media article. This time the headline was negative, and then it read, nine out of 10 females fail tough infantry officers course. And then the quote from the Marine spokesperson in this one emphasized females failing the training. And then finally we had the control cell, which featured the original unedited Marine Corps Times news article. So all the participants, regardless of the cell they were assigned, completed the same post-test questionnaire. And the scales we used measured for reputation, credibility, and characteristics. So measuring for reputation, it afforded us the opportunity to look at how the Marine Corps was perceived insofar as their concern, uh, and frankly their honesty towards gender integration. So measuring for credibility, we took a look at certain uh, items such as believability, uh, truthfulness, as well as accuracy. And then finally with characteristics, we looked at several different traits, uh, some of which include sincerity versus insincerity, or accurate versus inaccurate. So like Justin said, we had 648 participants, and we gained these participants via Amazon Mechanical Turk. So I know Daisy and Jayla give you a little bit about what Amazon Mechanical Turk is, and I'll just go into it a little bit further. So Amazon Mechanical Turk is an online database that houses participants ready, willing, and actually capable um, and qualified to take uh, surveys or experiments for researchers, holla, like us. So, <laughs> yay, we're there. Um, so we gained those our participants, and what we really focused on were participants between the ages of 18 to 34, which is the ideal recruitment age for the Marine Corps. So the participants, when they were gained on Amazon Mechanical Turk, were housed in different cells. So like Justin was saying, we had a positive cell where participants were housed and they couldn't transfer between any other, of, any other cells, a negative cell and a control cell. So as far as our results, what we found was participants who were in the positive cell viewed the Marine Corps as more reputable than participants who were in the negative cell. More so, participants who were in the negative cell viewed the Marine Corps as less reputable than participants who were in the control cell, supporting our hypothesis that framing does have an impact on the reputation of the Marine Corps. Like our first hypothesis, we also measured credibility, and the Marine Corps was viewed by participant as, participants as more credible when they were in the positive cell than when they were in the control cell. And again, with characteristics, the Marine Corps was viewed as having more positive characteristics were in, when they were in the control cell than when they were in, uh, um, excuse me, when they were in the positive cell than when they, they were in the negative cell. So we didn't stop there. We decided to keep going with some additional analysis to see what else we can find. And we wanted to, of course, answer our research question. And so what we, uh, what we found was that as the variables like uh, reputation went up, credibility and characteristics went up. As reputation was measured lower, credibility and characteristics were measured lower. More so, the, the correlations continued, and as credibility measured higher upon participants, so were the characteristics of the Marine Corps by those participants. So, as amazing as it was, this study was not without limitations. It did have a few. Um, the, the most obvious one being the time of year. We, we deployed the study in January of this year, so the election, the inauguration, the women's march that was happening, there was this, the topic of gender equality and gender integration was a, was a big topic in the public conversation. So that could have affected the way um, the, our participants answered the questionnaire. Additionally, the way uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk is set up, one participant could possibly have taken the questionnaire more than once. So that could have skewed um, our results a little bit. But despite the limitations, going back to my original uh, point about the theme, looking forward, this study opens up um, further research for public affairs and PR practitioners um, into research on how they could use frames to help shape the narrative and add context and background and more information to a topic to help hopefully positively um, influence a public's perception of their organization or their department or whatever. So that being said, I welcome your questions. Thank you.